Hello, everybody, and you're very welcome to the National Concert Hall's virtual masterclass this afternoon, where uh, this is the latest in our series of July masterclasses, where we bring Ireland's top classical musicians and we pair them with some of uh, the country's up and coming most promising players for uh, an afternoon masterclass. And we're very delighted that even though we can't bring you into the National Concert Hall, we can bring the National Concert Hall or at least some of what we do to you. So we very much hope that you enjoy this afternoon's masterclass. Uh, we are delighted to welcome Cormac O'Hadon to be with us this afternoon for um, what uh, promises to be a very interesting session. Cormac O'Hadon, French horn, studied with Victor Marlish at the Royal Irish Academy, Academy of Music, and he was a member of the junior and senior youth orchestras of Ireland, as well as the Irish Youth Wind Ensemble. Uh, he then represented Ireland in the European Union Youth, Union youth Orchestra, uh, with whom he toured Europe, Russia and South America. And in 1997, he joined the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in London and in 1999 became a member of the Philharmonia Orchestra, also in London. Uh, very luckily for us, in 2009, Cormac returned home to join the RTE Concert Hall, so <laughs> the RTE Concert Orchestra as principal horn, uh, a position that he has retained since. And uh, since returning to Ireland, he has also established the Casopeo Wind Quintet, the Irish Horn Quartet, and the Cornucopia Brass Ensemble. Cormac joined the teaching staff of the Royal Irish Academy of Music in 2015, and this year was also appointed to the Board of Governors of that body. And uh, Cormac is also uh, a keen conductor and conducts in a variety of different ensembles. Cormac, you're very, very welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Nigel. Delighted to be here. We have uh, four uh, wonderful students of French Horn uh, working with Cormac this afternoon. Uh, we have Neve Huthurst, Cecily Montague O'Brien, Quiva Glavin, and Eleanor Hartnett. Uh, we are going to take a very short break after our first two participants. So that will be after Cecily. Uh, this will be just three to five minutes uh, for us all to grab a, a, a breath of air. And there will be an online Q&A session at approximately 4.30 uh, when we've heard from all of our participants and before we conclude. So if anybody has questions for Cormac, um, please uh, type them into the YouTube channel and uh, they'll be relayed to him at the end of the session. Our first participant is Neve Huthurst, and she's a fourth year student at the, uh, in the Bachelor of Music degree at the Royal Irish Academy of Music. Uh, under, indeed, Cormac O'Hedon. Last year, she was an Erasmus on the, at the Sibelius Academy Helsinki, and in 2019, Neve won first prize in the senior brass recital in the Fesh Kill. Uh, she joined Sinfonua, which is the National Concert Hall's development orchestra, in 2018, and uh, this year performed Beethoven's Fidelio with Sinfonua and Lyric Opera. And Neve is going to be playing uh, Mozart's Horn Concerto Number no. 3, First Movement. Neve, you're very, very welcome. Uh, I'm going to leave you in Cormac's capable hands and enjoy the session. Thank you, Cormac. Thank you, Nigel. And hello, everybody. A big hi to everybody around the country and around the world. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in Dublin. And uh, Nia, where are you? Um, I'm in Cork. Fantastic, in Cork. Okay. Uh, a big hi to all my other students and also to Liam Daly's students. He's called from Waterford to say that he would be uh, tuning in. Great, Neil. what are you going to play? Uh, I'm going to be playing the first movement from Mozart's Third Horn Concerto. Fantastic, okay. Um, I probably should say one of the challenge we, challenges we have uh, working from home now um, is a lot of the equipment that we're using isn't designed necessarily to, to uh, pick up and capture the sound of the French horn. So sometimes there's a little bit of distortion with the sound. But, uh, and I think it's one of the things that we'd have to think about going forward into the future, how to get better microphones and equipment so that we can do classes like this and um, hear each other a little bit better. Okay, Niamh, take it away, please. Great, okay, and about twenty bars rest. Bum ba dum ba di da 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 da. Bum 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 bum. 
Thank you. Well done. So uh, that's the exposition of the concerto. I'm singing the in the absence of a piano or and or an, an orchestra. I'm uh, singing along the orchestral accompaniment. I um, hope I wasn't putting you off, Neve. No. Great. Okay. Let's have a look at the opening phrase again, please. Bom, bom. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Barth the third. It's a little bit. Um, let's see if I can do it. So it runs in a little bit. The, the semi chorus. There's a tiny little hesitation with what you're doing. Um, so if we could just think about running into, let's try the second phrase. Just that phrase. Great, there's a tiny hesitation, but I'm hearing one, two, three, ba -da -da -ba -dum. but can we run into it? And I know it's a little bit awkward, fingering-wise. One, two, three, ba -da -da -da, if you run straight through. So try it a little bit slower and see if it. One, two, three, ba -da 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 -da. And even then, there's this tiniest hes hesitation, so even at that tempo. So let's see if we can really nail it at that tempo. Bum, 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 bum. Good, I still hear it. So um, I'll try and do what I'm hearing. So I'm overdoing it a fraction there. Yeah. I'll do that again. But I think it needs to push into that first beat of the next bar. As if the next note is another semi-quaver. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three, ba 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 ba. Okay. Last time, that tempo. Good, getting better. Okay, let's move on. You've got a great sound, Neil. Well done, and really good intonation. Let's go uh, to the bom 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 bim bom bom in tempo. 
Very good. Bum, da dum, bum, ba, yum, bum. That printed A, which is we're playing a G. Are you doing that in first valve? Um, it sounds a tiny bit low in pitch to me. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm using the first valve. Only. Okay. First valve is fine, but I it just notice it there. Maybe it's a tiny bit low. We can just lip it up. Bum, da 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 da. We still need to keep it a little bit bright or we go on to the F horn for that. But that's a little, I probably personally prefer to stay on the B flat side and first valve, but it is a flat fingering. So we do need to do something either with the hand, we open up a fraction or we lip it up. So just from there, bum, be da da da. So it's better tuning, and but yeah, you're finding a new way to play it now. Okay, so just to be aware of that. Let's last time and let's move on. Um, be da -da -dum. Very good. Okay, so the tuning is much better, but as we can hear now that we've kind of disturbed the embouchure. We've moved it. And as a result, we we knocked uh, we we knocked over a couple of notes there. But it's just a matter of practicing it a number of times, being aware of where the embouchure needs to be to get those notes in tune. Yeah. Okay, let's go on for the moment. You're doing great. Be a bottom. <laughs> just take our time a fraction there to give a little bit more clarity with semi quavers so it's already fast we don't want to play it any faster than it's already written in fact we might just knock a half metronome mark off the tempo there just to slow down just a fraction just to help us with a bit more clarity Okay, otherwise very good. Let's go from the bum 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 bum. Very good. Okay. B I I I I I am buddy dum finishing quite strongly. So finishing quite strongly there. Okay, let's go on to the development section, please. Um. Excellent playing. 
And I love what you've done there. There's no markings in the original Mozart's part. So I think there's a, we have a license to add in uh, different articulations, maybe a few subtle dynamics, which you've done. And maybe the next two bars are exactly the same. So uh, uh, we, we could maybe do a, um, an echo or a piano. And then a little bit more mysterious, changing the articulation. Articulation again. Okay. And uh, let's into the recap then, please, Neil. Good, and let's keep on going. Good, well done. Uh, so most of the material, obviously, in the recapitulation, which is the same. What's the one thing that we, we want to remember in that opening phrase, which comes back? Um, the like second part of the, the phrase to connect the written D sharp to the semiquavers. Yes. So could we just try that again once last time slowly? Bum, 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 two, two three, ba -da 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 -da. Much better. Well done. Okay. I did notice the. Um, I did wonder. Did you give a full break for yourself in in the uh, the crotchet rest after this? Rest. It sounded a tiny bit. So. We horn playing is already tricky without making it even trickier by not giving us the full value rests that we really badly need. Okay, so um let's go from bum bum bum. Perfect. And on. Okay, excellently, well done. I did wonder whether bum 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 did we rush the top G? So bum bum ba da 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 da. There was just uh, you got a tiny bit ahead. Um, so I think working with the metronome is as torturous as it is is actually occasionally a really good thing to do, especially if you're practicing. If you have somebody else listening to you it's easier for them to say, oh, this sounds a bit, little bit rushed or this sounds a little bit behind. But if you're doing some practice and you just have a metronome, that's equally as good. Okay, so let's go. Um, bum, ba -da 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 -da.
Okay, very good. So the, the top G was perfect time, but it kind of caught his head a little bit and you knocked over the next note. But I kind of always see that as a good sign because it means that we're having to reroute and think to find a new way through. Um, and you got the G perfectly, but you spent so much concentrating on that that we we forgot about the next note. So let's see if we can get that bomb ba -da 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 from there. Perfect, well done. Okay, and I understand you have a cadenza? Yeah. An original composition by Neve Hugh Thirst, is that correct? Well, An original. <laughs> huh? Piece together by me. <laughs> that's okay. Well, that's what cadenzas are. They they quote all the main themes. So you, you've done the right thing. Okay. Excellent, Neil. Well done. Couldn't play it better myself. Really fantastic. Um, I love it. Great cadenza. Really good. Uh, challenging with the two top B flats. Um, I might save a tiny bit of energy at the beginning. Hopefully, so I can play that top top note. <laughs> So I'm starting the, the cadenza a little bit quieter so that I'm saving some breath and energy for the higher note. Um, and I think the same is true for the run at the end, the arpeggios at the end. I'll try that again. Okay, you played it better. Well done. Um, do you have any questions, Niamh? Um, I suppose kind of the thing I'm trying to work on is just pieces. Um, rounding out the sound between the low and high register because it kind of goes lower than most of its concertos like with the low b flats and um and then it go, it's kind of in the higher register so um i guess do you have any advice for kind of rounding out the sound between the registers when you, when you say the low b flat you bum, ba -dee -da 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 -dum. um I always think I I like the the idea of a big sound rather uh, rather than necessarily a strong sound. So I think it can be big and still piano. Uh, rather than kind of strong forte. 
So the first time I'm doing it, I'm trying to keep the dynamic down, but at the same time, I'm trying to make the biggest sound that I can make in that dynamic. So let's call it a piano or a mezzo forte, but it's a big piano rather than a, a small piano. So I'm trying to even out the sound. The more air that we put through the instrument, I think it really helps. Do you want to just try from there? Okay, maybe a, little, a tiny bit soft. Uh, um, there's a tiny bit of edge to the sound. I don't know if that's the computer, but maybe we can just come back ever so slightly. Um, good. And on. Good, and on. Good. So you have two, you have one octave and a half there from the, the, the low C to the high G. Um, and the sound is really even, which is what we're looking for to have that even quality across all dynamic uh, registers, in all dynamics if possible. Good, any other questions? Um, I guess like with the harsh attacks um, you're talking about, just the, uh, is there a way of reducing that? Um, I think it's got to do with articulation and the tongue. I, I, I think the the articulation, the tonguing is a little bit too strong. There's a lot of front on that note. So I think if we could also practice without using the tongue for our for articulation. So I'm just kind of blowing air through the instrument without starting the note with the tongue. Does that, do you want to just try that? Good. Good. And again. And for me, for my ear, there's a lot less front to that note. What about you? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, without the tongue, for sure. And it's kind of more um, flowing. Okay. So um, we, we just we do have five minutes left, so uh, we can have a we can work on that. I think I'm not saying eliminate the tongue in the articulation, but sometimes we can articulate too hard and too much. And this gives a very kind of sharp front to the, to the note. But maybe if there's a little bit of a curve, a little bit round. So we're really just creeping in there rather than just suddenly starting the note. Okay, I've overdone it there just to, to demonstrate. But um, does that help? So I think it's an articulation thing when you're talking about, uh, the, it's almost like the shape of the note that the front doesn't, it's not too vertical. Good. Okay, any other questions? Uh, and and we, 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 let's just do a quick recap on what we've gone through today. Uh, will you tell me, so? You're, you've got to remember. So for the exposition, um, in the second part of the phrase, that uh, it should be a bit more connected to the written D sharp. Um, the Good, okay. Phrase. Good, can, and can we practice that now? Yeah. Bomb. So maybe really slow tempo. <laughs> Even in that slow tempo, I still feel, maybe I'm being very, very critical, but I still, I still feel there's a slight hesitation. Yeah. Can I, can I try and demonstrate what I'm hearing? Um, and you, you, you agree or disagree with me. Could you 
Would you hear that? Is it clear? Yeah, it's kind of like stopping the phrase a bit. Okay, so let's take it out of context. Um, okay, just that fret, just that little pattern. Perfect. Again. And a few times. Again. Good. So we can even hear now, in, in, and we've, we've, we've really isolated it. And I can still hear that you're not comfortable with it. So we'll kind of need to kind of make a new route through the thinking about this. Just round and round a few times to give ourselves, our, our brain and our fingers and our lips the chance to do this. Yep. Perfect. Last time. Good. And in context. Bum 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 bum. Good. Better. A bomb, two, three, four, ba da da. Okay, don't forget it's tied in. Last time. Good, and finish the phrase. Bum, beam, bum, bum. Good, and last thing we'll do, Niamh, is just the first two. Phrases in the modes are bom, bido, in tempo, okay. and keeping that in mind. Good. Better. better, better, better. Well done. Okay, Neve, we leave it there. Okay, thank you so much. Well done. Fabulous playing. Thank you very much, Neve. Well done. Lovely playing. And thank you, Cormac, uh, for your insights. Uh, fascinating always to, to get the, uh, the inside track on, on, on uh, an instrument which was uh, on my early wish list of things to play. And I never got to play it. I became the world's worst trumpet player, uh, but I never had a crack at the French horn. So thank you. Um, we are moving on to our second par participant, and this is Cecily Montague O'Brien. Cecily, how are you today? I hope you're feeling OK. I'm good, thank you. Good. Cecily is 18 years old and began studying the horn with Ian Dakin when she was 10. She has been a member of the National Youth Orchestra of Ireland and uh, Cecily is going to play Strauss Horn Concerto No. 1, Third Movement. Cecily, enjoy the session with Cormac and I will leave you, uh, I will leave you uh, to it. And we will, just to remind, we'll be taking a very short break after Cecily. And if anybody has questions, please feed them to us via the YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you, Nigel. Cecily, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Great, where are you, where are you calling from? Um, I'm coming from Dublin. Same as myself, okay, great. Okay, so what are you going to play? I'm playing Strauss, uh, I'm going to number one, third movement. Great, okay, let's yeah. go. Uh -huh. Well done, excellent. Okay, um, I find I find this quite tricky uh, fingering wise. It's a little bit funny. How about a fraction slower? Bum, 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 just for practice yeah. and notes. Great. 
right, okay. So um, if you're like all the other home players in the world, um, we're all worried about that last top note, the B flat. But I think there's about probably 40 other notes that we we're, we we need to play before we get there. Let's take the tempo down a tiny bit just for practice. So just for practice, um, a practice, um, ba -bi -bi -a -da 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 ba -da -da and to find each, to give give ourselves the chance to find each note. Bum 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 well done okay so if we take the tempo a fraction slower it gives us a chance just to find the notes but it also gives us a chance to take a breath because air is going to be the thing that helps us get through all of this okay um the first half was absolutely perfect well done okay let's go from biadam um biadam so the really important breath, I think, after the first breath is eight bars later, the start of our run up to that top B flat. <laughs> Okay, the next breath here I think is really important. So I think we the breath that we take at that point, whether we take a tiny other breath, some other breath, which is also possible after that, but essentially that's the main breath to get us up to the B flat. And through to the rest of the phrase. Let's just go from that point. Point. Bum 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 ba da. And let's check. Ba da dee dum. Yeah. Let's just if you play that slowly, Cecily. Ba da dee dum. Perfect. Okay. And in context. Bum 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 ba da dee dum. <laughs> Okay, good. And really metronomic. So give yourself time to play. It's the B natural, which is the funny note in that phrase. Okay, just again. Good. And the next phrase, let's do the next phrase in the same tempo. Bum bum. Good. And next phrase. Bum bum be. Good. And I know that the top B flat is important, but I kind of wonder is the F before it even more important? And I think we very often constant we're thinking about the B flat that we forget to play the F. Yeah. And if the, the trouble is if we don't get a good F, then the likelihood or chances of us getting a top B flat are even less. Mm -hmm. So let's concentrate on the F. <laughs> so just a few times, bum bum, bum bum. And when you're happy with that, bum bum be. Good, okay. And let's forget about the B flat for a moment. Bum bum, bum a few times so that you're comfortable with it. 
and you can really have feel that like you've got good strength on the F. Good. Perfect. Last time. Good. Really tricky. No, I think we need to focus to get that top B flat. I think it's a combination of airstream, bum bum B, really fast airstream, but it's it's not just airstream on its own that's going to help us get that note. We actually have to focus the embouchure even even tighter, even more. I like the word focus because it kind of brings everything in. So. So let's think about that air going forward, straight through, yeah. bum bum B. In fact, let's play the F a bit longer, bum bum B, so it's connected. Mm -hmm. Good, that was much better. And again, connect the F to the B flat. Nearly, again, last time. Perfect. You got the top B flat perfect there. Okay, let's finish the phrase because very often what happens is in performances, we get the B flat and we're like, oh, we're really happy we got the top B flat. And then we kind of lose concentration and split the next note, which is which is awkward as well because it's bum, bum, B, bum, it's the G. Mm -hmm. So let's just try to put that into context sl slightly slower. Okay, really tricky um, few bars there. You're doing great, Cecily. Okay, let's go on for the moment and back into tempo. Bum, 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 ba -dum. Or whatever tempo you want. Excellent playing. Got a very gurgly third valve there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit sticky. <laughs> Is there, do you want to just check the third valve slide? Mm. I guess there's a ton of, sounds like there's a ton of water. Um, I think this passage is good if it's kept going yeah. because it's quite a long phrase. So we kind of don't hang around. here for a real pianissimo if possible. So just from the pianissimo Flat, are you doing second and third for the D flat? I was just going on the um, F side because the 
the third slide is a bit stuck. The wood is kind of <laughs> stuck in there. The okay, the so the third slide is stuck in the instrument. Yeah, it's just a bit stuck at the moment. Oh, so you can't get it out to empty the water out, is it? No. Okay, so you're going on to the F horn. Wow, that's very brave. <laughs> okay, let's let's give it a go from the F. you moved maybe from the B flat to the A a tiny bit too fast but uh, just so, so tiny bit of metronome practice is good as well yeah. okay mm, bum, 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 or uh, whatever the next entry is Excellent playing, Cecily. That's really good. Um, I think to, um, it's a little bit like what I said to Nee of just giving her, giving Nee of giving herself a chance to play the faster notes mm -hmm. and to have that clarity. And I think that clarity sometimes comes when we just give ourselves a fraction more time to play the fast notes. <laughs> So I'm not trying to rush. I, I'm, if anything, I'm actually just coming back a fraction in tempo. Um, so just keep that in mind. Let's go for... Um, I can never pitch that G. Bum, bum, bum. Just from there, and give yourself a little bit time, a little bit of time for the fast notes. Ba ba bum, beam, bum, ba bum, ba 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 bum, bum ba ba Okay, and just at the very end there, um, that was really perfect what you did. Uh, and at the pianissimo, just a little bit more time. Um, so I've given myself enough time to take a breath there. Body that A written A is three beats. One, two, three. So I think if it's a fraction shorter, 
I don't think anybody's going to mind because it's already quite a long note, which gives us a chance then to really take a, a good breath and kind of relax. Beep, beep, ba, da, do, ba, ya, ba, 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 and really prepare for that pian pianissimo. Okay, um, how about you go from ba, da, 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 the second. <laughs> Good. Okay, you gave yourself a really loads of time. That was fantastic what you did. Let's um, clarify exactly what's happening in the pianissimo. Be body so a little bit slower on the tempo. Bum, two. Just that a couple of times. Okay, I'm hearing something different from what I've got printed. B ba B ba A. G F F A C bum 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 is that what you have? Yeah. Bum bum yeah. bum bum. So right up ba from the G yum bum bum bum. Mm -hmm. Good. That was it. Okay, and slower, but that was it. B yum bum bum bum. Mm -hmm. Good. And again. And still slower tempo just for um precision. Bye. Yum bum bum bum. Oh, that was the best you played it. Okay. And now it's absolutely perfect. So let's speed it up a tiny bit. B yum bum bum bum. B yum bum bum bum. Last time, by yum bum bum bum. Good, okay, and in context now. So, bottom the B flat A, G, yum bum bum bum, bottom. Okay. Let's try it again. Huh? Yeah, from the B flat. Yeah. Good. Perfect. And now let's put it even into bigger context. So from the same place you went from the ba da 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 di dum bum ba bum. Keep on going. Two. Very good. So again, we just give ourselves a fraction time to play those fast notes. Maybe it's worth doing that semi quaver is a fraction slower to indicate that we've gone into a different time signature from 6 8 back into 4 4. Okay. Immediately before that, bum 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 bum, just that bit there, a fraction under tempo, bum 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 bum. Good, that was perfect. So that phrase again, same tempo. Okay, and I, I do wonder is the E flat coming a fraction early? Bum bum ba yum. So it does sound bum bum ba yum. Yeah. So let's be really 
rely on our inner metronome. Bum, bum, ba, da, 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 bum, bum, bum. Good. And on. Bum, 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 bum. Good. Fantastic. Are we going up to that point, Cecily? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, very good. So, do you have any questions at the moment? Um, I think the, I think the thing I was trying to work on most at the moment is just the, the phrasing, like in the slow passages, like at L. So I was kind of wondering where um you'd breathe at those parts, kind of. Cause okay, tell me where L is because I don't have it in my music. Oh yeah, and so around by like forty four. I don't have the bar numbers either. Okay. Da, da, de, da, da, de. okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, what's your question about the the? Just yeah, like where um, because obviously there's a lot of breath marks in the part. But yeah. Like, would you take every breath mark, or like which ones would? You... Yeah. Okay. This is a really good question, and and um, if anybody's looking at that, any horn players are looking at that Strauss edition. It's absolutely got breath marks everywhere. And these aren't Strauss's breath marks. They're the editor's breath marks. So it's nothing got to do with the music. It's got to do with the ed editor feeling that he had to do something. So I would do, so I I've, have a copy of this that I've eliminated. I've crossed out all the breath marks because they just annoy me so much. And I'd rather try and listen to the music and take a breath where, where it feels right or where I really need to breathe so that I can play. So, Let's forget about the breath marks and do you want to play for that point and just see what feels natural to you? Okay. Bum, 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 ba, ba. So I do, um, if, you, if you have a listen to where I breathe in that passage. So I take two breaths, one at the very beginning um, bum, bum, bum. And after the second D. Yeah. And I don't, where did you breathe? I breathed like just before. After yeah. The Good. And where else did you, did you take a breath? Um, after, before you go up to the high G as well. Yeah. For me, I mean, it's, uh, that's totally, you, 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 wherever you need to breathe, you need to breathe. Mm -hmm. I would try and avoid breathing before the top G because we what happens when we take a breath is we disturb the embouchure. Mm -hmm. And so we have to reset it as well as taking a breath. We have to reset the embouchure. Yeah. Um, unless, of course, you take a breath through your nose. But I would be very wary of breathing before the G because I think we increase the risk of actually just missing the G. Yeah. So this is where I take my breath. I know where you took a breath after the first, after the D, yeah. but I take mine a couple of beats later mm -hmm. because it just, hopefully I'll have enough air then to get through the rest of the phrase. Yeah. So, I mean, essentially you're breathing for two reasons. One is for musical reasons. You know, you want to take a breath in, in a place that sounds musical, or if you can't, and the, the other reason uh, for, for, for breathing is for, the technical aspect of actually get you know you we we all need air to play these uh, instruments so if we find ourselves having to take a breath in an unmusical place we need to kind of try and disguise it a little bit if possible and make it sound like it's still it's meant to be we're meant to take a breath there even if maybe there is a better place but we simply don't have enough air to get through so we need to kind of get 
really good at taking a breath and disguising it yeah in, uh, in terms of um in, in terms of a musical line but let's never be shy of taking a breath because without air we can't get a sound out of the instrument so let's take in the the, the machine needs lots of air okay so we just have a few minutes left cecily let's go from the um that phrase again and see how you get on didn't take a breath before the high G very mm -hmm. good but you were at the limit of your air yeah, and so yeah. what, ha what happened next yeah I missed I ran out of breath at the end <laughs> and what did you so okay so you needed to take a breath mm -hmm. but you took a breath before the F yeah which you needed to do and you got the F but I think you missed the C on the way down mm -hmm. and this is the more moving parts we have with it with the horn the more tricky it is. So the simpler the, the breathing kind of places, and if we map out where exactly it is um, we want to breathe, we give ourselves the, back, the best chance then of actually getting the phrase with all the notes. So you got the, you, you did brilliant, you, took, you didn't take a breath before the G, but you were limited with your air, so you have to take a breath at, before the F, which you got, but maybe things weren't as comfortable or set up as they would normally be, and we missed the C. So we kind of have to be strategic with where we breathe. Okay, um, just a couple of minutes left, Cecily. Any questions? Other questions? I think I'm okay for this. Okay, let's do a little tiny recap then on, on what is important in this movement. Mm -hmm. So for you, what do you feel um, you, you can take away from this? Um, definitely what you were saying with breathing when like sometimes obviously you need to if it's not musical but then also like when you need to you have to <laughs> okay yeah mm -hmm. yeah and what about the very first the opening phrase in the last movement what mm -hmm. are we going to do about that how do we approach that because it genuinely is tricky so have you have you got kind of strategic way of practicing that and usually I kind of isolate the first part by itself. Very good. A couple of times before it goes yeah. In. yeah, good. And what about the infamous bit at the end with up to the top B flat? What did we say about that? Yeah, make sure, making sure the, the F is right before that that's kind of as important as getting the B flat. Yeah, like it's a real anchor point before we head up to the B flat. And just to reinforce it a couple of times, the C to the F. Yeah. So we can we find a way to be comfortable on the F. Yeah. And then when 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 we found that position of comfort, then maybe we can jump up to the B flat. And we could do this a number of times just to strengthen the embouchure. And um also Finding our way through the end of this phrase is tricky because it's not just getting up to the top, but it's actually getting down from the top. Yeah, after the B-flat. Okay, so it's the G as well, which is catches us out really easy. And there was one last thing that in that phrase, do you remember to the B, B natural? Or C, B, da, dum. Um, bee, ba, 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 da. So let's just hear ba, da, dee, da, make sure we've got it right. Good, okay. 
and let's do just the second half of the of that phrase bum 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 it's like the under temple bum 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 good bum do we want do we want to try the b flash i'm sure yeah okay let's go bum bum Bum, bum, let's try C, F, C, F, C, and then find the comfortable and then B, that. Good. And focus. For okay, last chance. Yeah. Well done, Cecily. Fantastic. Okay, really good. We got the G on the way down as well. Fantastic. Okay, look, we'll leave it there for now. Thank well done, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cecily, well done. Uh, lovely playing again, and thank you again to Cormac. Uh, just a reminder, we're gonna take a very short break now, about three to five minutes maximum break. Uh, keep questions coming in if you have any for Cormac on the YouTube channel, uh, and we will answer them at our Q&A session at approximately 4.30. Uh, but for now, we're just going to take a very quick break and we will be back with our third participant, Quiva, in just a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody, and welcome back. And uh, now uh, we're delighted to continue this afternoon's masterclass uh, with Quiver Glavin. Uh, Quiver is a fourth year student in the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, and will be starting a master's in the Royal College of Music in September. She's also played with the uh, NCH Development Orchestra Sinfonua. And uh, Quiver is going to play v Villanelle by Ducas. You're very welcome, Quiver and we hope you enjoy the session. Just a reminder, please do keep any questions coming in on YouTube and we will relay them to Cormac at our Q&A session at 4.30. Cormac, I'll hand it over to you and thank you very much. Thank you, Nigel. Hi, Quiva. Hello. Where are you calling from? Kerry. The kingdom, <laughs> up the kingdom, okay. Great stuff. And what are you, you're gonna play Duca Villanelle. Fantastic. Okay, do you want to take it away there? Do we have Quiva? Do I? Night. Oh. Yes. Sorry, folks. We appear to have a internet issue just for a second. Uh, we're just going to try and sort that out. So Cormac uh, might ask you just to uh, mute and switch your camera off for a couple of seconds. And folks, we will be back to you uh, as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you. Hello, everybody, and we, we do apologize for uh, the technical hitch. Unfortunately, it appears that some internet gremlins have got in the works um, this afternoon. We do hope uh, to return to Quiva as soon as we can, but we're going to change our order, if that's OK. And uh, I understand that, Eleanor, uh, you're ready to go, if that's so. If... Hey, Eleanor. Hiya. We're... Okay, Nigel, are you still speaking because you're on mute? Yeah. Great. Okay. Do you want to say anything else, Nigel? I beg your pardon. Yes, I was introducing Eleanor, who is 19 years old and has just finished her first year of undergraduate studies in biological and biomedical sciences in Trinity College. She started playing horn when she was 12 years old and has just submitted her senior certificate exam online after having spent the last seven years studying with Fergus O'Carroll in the Royal Irish Academy of Music. And... Uh, Eleanor is going to be playing Hindemith's Horn Concerto First Movement. Thank you. Enjoy the session. Thanks, Nigel. Hi, Eleanor. Hiya. <laughs> well, where are you calling from? I'm in Galway at the moment. Wow, fantastic. Look at you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's start, please. Hindemith, Hindemith Concerto yeah. First Movement. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I do like it. It is weird. It's it's not as melodious as like the other pieces that the others are playing and stuff, which makes it harder. But I do I do enjoy playing it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a class work. Absolutely, there's no doubt. Yeah. But it is a bit weird. Yeah, definitely. It's a bit difficult. It doesn't kind of. It's not as easy to listen to as Mozart or Strauss or even yeah. the the Villanelle, um, which. Uh, Quiv is going to play is very melodic. So this is also melodic, but it's just a very different melodic yeah, type. Yeah, a different way, yeah. Okay. I mean, even the first line, it's just mezzo forte. There's not a huge amount of dynamics. I kind of, I kind of think of it, when I, when I think of it, I think of it a little bit like a, of a wall of sound that isn't necessarily that nuanced or there's not a huge amount of subtlety. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, I think if we could just push quite a significant amount of air um, at a slow pace, maybe through the instruments, uh, just so it's a kind of a, a little bit more connected. Yeah. slow tempo I mean Hindemith is very specific about the metronome marks mm -hmm. 88 between 88 and 92 yeah it's pretty okay. small <laughs> yeah so it is and it says moderately fast but actually I kind of almost regard that as moderately slow okay so, so slow tempo let's have a look at the first phrase again please thanks Elder. Great. So maybe it's quite handy to have that slightly slower tempo so we yeah. can really hear the semi quavers. So we can really, we're not skipping, we're not trying to play them too fast. to give some time to to make sure that we can take care of the small notes as well mm -hmm. okay yeah. that's that's beautiful what you're doing last time through that first phrase 
and let's just make sure that we give those semi quavers a chance to sound. Have a look just specifically at the ba -ba -yum -ba -ba, the last from the F sharp. Mm -hmm. So we're really happy with it. Just just in isolation, those uh, few notes. Good. Again. Good. That was it. That was better. Okay. You don't look too. You don't look too. Happy. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. But that was that was actually better, boy. It's it. They're awkward intervals, and yes, it's suddenly we have to get up quite high to this G. Boy, mm. boy, well, okay, I, I'm not able to pitch it. But if you. <laughs> I think if the airflow is good, if it's continuous, that, that really helps us get up to that top note. Okay, last time that one. Good, and on. Four D. If you just play that bar, good. Okay, and let's play the very bar twenty one. Just bar twenty one. Okay. So I'm just trying to make the the relationship there between the mezzo forte in the mm -hmm. in bar twenty one. Oh yeah. Okay. Still have a mezzo forte I, I felt that you maybe came down dynamically in bar 29 or bar 30. okay yeah okay um i you know he's very specific about that dynamic there so i'd be a little bit careful with that like we still we wanted to match the dynamic of the of the very open and then so we're really, we have this consistency in our playing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's hear um, bar 30. Good, and he asks for a diminuendo over two bars. Which is which is tricky. So, um, it's tricky if we haven't gone up to a, a stronger dynamic. Yeah. So yeah. he's actually helping us by getting us to start that phrase in mezzo forte, and then he writes a crescendo two bars later to an even greater dynamic. And don't forget, when it says diminuendo, it doesn't mean quietly immediately. It means getting quiet quieter from the dynamic that you've reached. So then you have a better spacing with the dynamics. Okay, so actually the, the low C sharp written should really still be at that strong dynamic. I would even say forte. Yeah, okay. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay, so let's do uh, bar before D, please. Good, and let's start from the low C sharp now. So nice strong forte. And it's strong on the D as well. 
try to give all of these notes maybe a little bit more weight by playing them slightly longer. And I'm a little bit more in control of them if there's a little bit more air behind them. Yeah. Flat hand the C sharp. Boom. E. You're, let's, don't worry, you're doing great. <laughs> well done. The, definitely the trick is phrase in the whole first movement. And again, if it's a slightly slower tempo, I mean, the, the notes that he's written at E Ba, yadidam, they're demi, they're not even semi quavers. They're yeah. demi semi quavers. So they're really quite fast, but in the slower tempo, we, we just we need to find space so that we can hear them. Nasty slur up to that G sharp. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But um, it's a little bit like that stress, the opening of the stress that we did uh, with Cecily. Just that, yeah. how do we get through this phrase? And the actually the trickiest bit is at the end. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that's not my concern right now. My concern is E, ba, ya da da, da 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 ba. So just give yourself time to play D, ya da da. Good. So somehow we need to fuck by yada to play through it. So just that. Okay. So B, let's let's break it down in bum. Just those two notes, D sharp and B. Playing through. So really connected. Time, same thing. Okay. Better, yeah. And let's go be yadiram. So out of time, but just so that we can find where that the, the B to the sheep C sharp is be yadiram. Perfect. And and let's see if we can do it again though. <laughs> Good, okay. So again, I, I did. spending enough time on it, yeah. Okay. Uh, but I, I, for me, there's a time, it, you, we're not connecting the D sharp to the to the B. Yeah. We're not playing through it. I think you're ba, ba, di, da, B, ba, di, da. But I, for, I think it, it, it'll be easier to play actually if we play through it. Ba, ya, di, da, um, instead yeah. of coming away from it. Okay. Okay, perfect. Let's go on. Ba da dum ba yum ba. Very good. Okay. Um. So, in the end of E up to the F sharp, we need to play through so to find that F sharp. Okay, 
So I'm really kind of having to force some air through the instrument to, to help me get that F sharp. Mm -hmm. Good, perfect. Okay. Bum, beep, bum, beep, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. Let's go from the E. Ba, dum, ba, dum. Very good. And finding a way to get that slur up to the G sharp. Yeah, so I'm really, it's having to kind of force the air through, change the embouchure and really try and focus on that e, e, um, that G sharp. Mm -hmm. um, it is tricky for sure. And actually I had a quick listen to the Dennis Brain recording this of this who, yeah. who Vindemit wrote for. I actually think he articulates that top G sharp. Okay. He doesn't okay. slur through it. So I think he's taken a slightly sneaky. So <laughs> if Dennis Brain can take a slightly sneaky route, well, may, maybe there's hope for the rest of us. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's just do that phrase E, the whole thing, and we'll keep, you know, we'll, let's do it, yeah. Fantastic. Really, really great playing, Eleanor. Uh, just two tiny little things. It's important, you know, Hindemith is very specific in writing tiny semiquaver rests. So he's very specific there. So he wants to hear a tiny bit of space. Um, I felt those notes were, there wasn't the space that I felt that we needed. Okay, last time. Fantastic. Really, really, really brilliant. Okay, and interestingly, it's only now we've got to the first forte of the piece. Yeah. Okay. And there's one other forte in this movement. At the very end. Yes, at the very end, which is kind of amazing. There's, there's only specifically two fortes and yeah. the rest is mezzo forte. And then there's a few piano pianos. And that's it. A few dims and a few crescendos. But yeah. actually the dynamic is, the majority of the dynamic is a mezzo forte, or like a re, and I kind of find mezzo forte a bit boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most boring dynamic in the world. <laughs> but but uh, Hindemith is very specific. He kind of, you know, he was a genius, so he knew what he was doing. If he wanted this, this kind of really, um, I am, I don't actually know the history of the concerto. I know, know it was written in 1949 after the war. So maybe there's some stuff there about the tragedy of war or something. Okay, let's go on to um, bar before F, please. For those listening, it's a really funny little passage here. There's a 7-8 bar followed by a 6-8 followed by a 3-8 followed by two bars of 7-8, 6-8, 5-8 and then we get back to the recap in 4-4. So it's a little bit, it's very disjointed now of time and I think it's very quirky. Um, 
So let's just give ourselves time to find our way through the strange bit. <laughs> So, time to play each of those notes. Okay, same place. are we a G? It's not written. Not written, yeah. What so, would you say? Back to the recap. Yeah, I'd, I kind of took it as that it goes back to piano from the... Very good, okay, part. interesting, yeah. Okay, maybe you're right, actually, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> no, maybe you're right. I was kind of thinking, okay, we're recap, so maybe we need to get back to a little bit of stronger, but maybe there, it's... He has a piano crescendo, G crescendo, and so technically, yes, we could be at piano crescendo, and then the next dynamic that's written is mezzo forte. Okay, let's go with your idea. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, 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 I think it's a really, it's really good. Um, so when the theme comes back, it's not the same as the, as as the the first time. It's all the same notes, uh, or or a lot of the same notes, but and it's obviously the main theme, but there is a dynamic change as well okay let's just go from g and maybe we can make more of the crescendo in the third bar of g um to make more of the mezzo forte so we're in a better place in the mezzo forte than to do the diminuendo we have actually got somewhere to go to we've got somewhere to go from and to mm -hmm. that makes sense okay g <laughs> G, um, we, we, even if we're playing piano, we still need some sound. So mm -hmm. we could try to make the sound as soft as possible, but it can still be big, I think, but, but big but soft. that there's a there's a kind of an arc dynamically to our phrase does that make sense yeah okay last time that phrase and we'll go on there well done and on one by yada dum yeah same problem as before yeah okay which was the i feel it's similar to the one at e of the not joining the c sharp to the a i agree yeah 
So can you practice, can you find out a way to work out a way yourself now just to... Yes. To, Good. Yeah. Good. Better already. Yes. Better already. And again. Good. I'm still kind of skipping over it. I feel I'm skipping over the B. Yeah. Okay. Good. So it's really the B is is fine. It's the A. So the C sharp yeah. to the A. Just practice the C sharp to the A first to get a good connection. B um. Good. Okay, that's perfect. Now B yadi dum B yadi dum. Good. Okay, and the whole phrase. Perfect, okay. And on. for the people at home that strange little phrase that sounds like it's going into a different time signature it's not actually it's still in 4-4 but the accents are in different places in the bar <laughs> He's doing something different compositionally there from what he did earlier. Okay, really good. Second last, I think the, the last entry is a fraction early. Okay. Three down, yeah. ba down, two, three, four, da 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 da. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Be down, ba down, two, three, four, da 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 da. Yeah. There. Two, three, four. Okay, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a bit of a delay in you here. Yeah. <laughs> bum, 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 two, three, four, da 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 da, da. which reminds me of Mahler five, da 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 da. Okay, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Good, excellent playing, Eleanor. Uh, really, really well done. Um, before we leave it. I think it's important, even though it's difficult to practice with the metronome, some of these, like seven eights, it's just impossible. And then going into a six eight, it just doesn't work. But it's important to count out the rests as well. And I know it's very tempting when you're practicing at home um, just to not bother with a few rests. But it's incredibly important because we just get into a, a, a groove um, um, of playing. And then when it comes to they're actually playing with the piano we, we end up playing two bars early because that's just what we've always done for so it's incredibly important sometimes that you completely count out all the rest as well and i think that um applies to neve as well uh neve remember we spoke about there was a giving a full crotchet beat it's absolute full value okay eleanor have you any questions specifically about the piece um sort of i think my main thing with it is kind of what you were saying earlier of trying to make it sound even though it is slightly just like disjointed the different parts trying to make it sound as if it's all one phrase even if it isn't kind of come across as that but yeah I think just trying to make it sound as connected as possible is my main problem yeah well it's not a problem because you play it very well I so but there are big long phrase marks um Let's just finish with doing the opening phrase, so the opening two lines, and see if we can keep that as sustained as possible. X, 
excellent work. So it is just about, a, I kind of think of it as a, as I said before, a wall of sound. That's just mm -hmm. kind of, maybe it's like an army that's just coming at you really slow, but it's kind of a little bit menacing. Um, and uh, there are places to breathe. I'm not 100% sure myself. I mean, it, he, he's very kindly, Hindemith, he probably worked with Dennis Brain on this. So he very kindly left some tiny little places where we can breathe. So we have a few options. And I think unless we have air, it's not going to work. Um, what dynamic did you start at? I probably played it a bit quieter than I should have. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I prefer it. Per personally, I prefer it a little bit stronger, or a little bit bigger. I don't mean stronger, bigger. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives me a chance then to have a, a bit of a wall of sound, if you like. Mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. okay uh, any other questions or will we leave it there um, i think i'm okay thank you very much though okay. well done eleanor that's absolutely fantastic congratulations thank okay thank, thank you very much eleanor well done uh, and a very interesting piece not one that i'd heard before um thank you again cormac and i think we have quiva back so uh quiva if you uh are uh there you there you are sorry i hadn't seen you and um so I think we're ready to resume with you, Quiva, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll go straight in. And uh, just to, to remind people that at the end of this, which will be a little bit later than previous, previously advertised, so we'll be looking at a Q&A session just after uh, 4.45. And uh, if there are any questions for Cormac, please type them into our YouTube channel. Great, Quiva, Cormac, I'll leave you to it. Hi, Quiva. Hello, sorry. Great to see you again. It's not your fault. <laughs> One of the perils of um, of the, the difficulties of not having the la master path class yeah. live. But anyway, um, but we can have the class. Okay, let's get cracking before something else happens on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> piece for the Paris Conser for Conservatoire. Not, I, I don't think on finishing the Conservatoire, but actually on getting into the Conservatoire. That's how brilliant players they were. Okay, um, really fabulous playing. Uh, I would just say at the beginning, we have to be careful that we give each note its full length. Bayaram, bam, bam, two, three, 
okay? So it was a little bit short, the low C, and then the, the next one also. Bayam beam bam two three. So I know it's tempting to come off since it's a little bit of a boring middle C mm -hmm. and it's kind of a, it's a long note and we want to save our energy for what's coming up. But I think it's really important that we give each note its full value. Bayam bam B two Okay, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I also felt ba yam ba da 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 di da dum ba dum ba da 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 dum two one two and still resting to ya dum. So you didn't give the full length in the rests there. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I just think in a piece like this, there's a lot of activity. This is just in the first page. So we, we don't need to short, short change ourselves and make it even more difficult. We need all the time off that we can get yeah. in terms of, so make sure that you practice with a metronome. So I think that applies to everybody that everybody that, that I've seen, the metronome is good. It doesn't lie, you know. Okay. Um, very nice. I might give myself a little bit more freedom in the cadenza-like passage. So it's a little bit, I think we should make the most of this in terms of it's a, it's a kind of a cadenza. Okay, yeah. And a little bit more out of time. So should we go? Ducas very specific about the articulations as well. In the bar before the, the très vif, I would think that they're a little bit longer. So there's a slur line and there's the, these flat articulation marks. Uh, 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 so I think we need to be careful. We need to try and change the articulation as he wants. Yes. Um, sure. So from the ba da da di da 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 second one. So I would regard that as as almost being legato. It's legato, but but with articulate articulation, the body, daddy, the, the chromatic line. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense with the articulations? Yeah, yeah. So he's really specific in this passage here. Okay, so let's go from ba da da bi da da da. The second one, ya da da. Very good. That's fine. Okay, but you did play it full length the last time, or the first time you played it through. Excellent. Okay, let's go on to this. Bum, bing, bum, bing, 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 bing. Well done. You held on to that last 
note as well. Okay, any thoughts yourself on that? I thought it was a little bit messy. Um, okay, and um, yes, I think you, you can play it better than that. What is a contributing factor or what can you do to make that better? Um, maybe airflow and maybe concentration. Like uh, Possibly, yeah. I, I wonder, would it just be if, if you took took it back a notch tempo-wise? Oh, sure, yeah. And you gave yourself a chance to play all the fast notes. make sure I had to hold on hold on to the last note there um since I was giving you such a hard time but I would approach just playing that because it's so fiddly um and not forgetting my best guess is that this was played on the F horn okay. which are, so I mean we really do have a, a greater advantage now playing that on the B flat side okay so I don't think it's that fast. I know people rattle through it, but I'm not actually sure it's what Duca had in mind to be so fast. Yeah. And anyway, look, it doesn't matter what tempo we take it, as long as it sounds as good as it can sound. So, well, what do you think about the tempo thing? Yeah, no, I think it'd be a good thing to do, yeah. Okay, so just a frack, like five notches off the metronome. Perfect. Well done. Well done. And maybe we can just lighten it up. Hi folks, it looks like Cormac's stream has just frozen. Um, Quiva, if you wanna go ahead, you can turn off your mic and camera and we'll just have a brief moment here while we wait for, for Cormac to rejoin the call, everyone.
Well, we're, we're having a day of uh, internet connectivity issues. Our apologies uh, for, for the, the delay and the pause there. Cormac, you're back with us. And uh, without further ado, we'll, we'll let you two dive straight back in where you left off. Fantastic. OK, Quiva. Great. OK, so let's go from the Rizzoluto. Well, fabulous playing, Quiva. I just wonder again, is it a fraction fast? Yeah, sure. Um, so we, we need to be able to give time to play. Just an edge of the metronome might make a big difference. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay that same passage. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. And on. anybody thinks that the internet has gone completely wonky and uh, that strange sound that you're hearing um Quiva, do you want to explain what it is um hand stopping so you're blocking the bell with your hands very good you're blocking the opening there so you really have to kind of squeeze a lot of air through Kind of goes back to using the hand for the hand hold technique. Excellent. Um, and this passage, because it's a little bit hard work, it's maybe easy, it's better to move it on a fraction because it really is quite tough in the chops. So maybe we can balance out what's happened earlier in we, we take the metronome marking a little bit back, but maybe actually here we can speed it up a fraction. Just help us get us through. Yeah. This phrase. Okay, let's try the Gestopft bit again. the space and the time to allow us to play and that we have enough air. Um, the moment let's start body daddy
pam pam pa pa pam 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 pa 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 Good. And do you want to explain to everybody what you have there? Or show everybody? Okay, so we've just had a hand stop bit, closing off the sound of the, the French horn. Now we're using the mute. Yeah, I, I would say with the mute, just to make sure that each note length is the same. It ten, there was a, a, I thought it was, okay, I'm over, exa over exaggerating, but bum, 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 Okay, good. Next bit, please. Bum, 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 bum. Good, well done. So I, I just felt it was a push too fast, maybe. Yeah. And we again just give ourselves time just to hear the music. Okay, so I missed the top G, but I'm just also giving myself time to set up, take a breath. Bum, 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 bum. I'm not in too much of a rush. We can rush towards the end of the piece. Yeah. Okay. Last time that. Passage. Great sound. Fantastic. Okay. Add on. So this is our little recap to the beginning. Very good, Quiver. And uh, one note. The upbeat is still in the old tempo. Be the lump and bump and bump in battle, lump in bump and bump and bump. Two, 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 one, two, one. Bayam. So, unlike the opening, which I think is Bayam, Bodida, this is Bayam. Do you know the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And while I think of it, um, the lump. On D's on the previous page. I don't think they were 100% um, full value. Oh, yeah, sure. Ba -dee -da -dee, ba -da -da -dee. Yes, so just to keep an, uh, an eye out for that. Okay, end. Bam, 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 beam, bam, 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 bam. Fantastic. Really good play. Okay. Uh, did I hear by yam ba 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 ya da 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 di a tiny little um maybe slur or not? Um not purposefully but purposefully. Okay, no, that's fine, but it's actually it can be a little sneaky little trick by ya da 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 ya da 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 just to help with the tempo. Okay. By da 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 ya da 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 if we and I don't think you need it. Okay. Did you really, really brilliant, really brilliant playing Kriva. Thank you. Have you got any uh, questions? Do you think um, 
the fifth bar from the end. Do you think it sounds um, like too bluffed? I did think that you, I did think you did a, a glissando. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I do think it needs to be ba da 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 ba da 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 Yeah. Okay. Do you want to try it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it, that does sound better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do, do it. Oh, sorry. Perfect. And finish it. Ah, fantastic. Okay. We'll end it there. Thank you. Well done. Really great playing. Thank you. Very much, uh, Quiva. Well done. Lovely playing. And thank you, Cormac. Um, and we overcame we overcame the hurdles and we got there in the end. Um, it's it's been a great pleasure uh, having having you here with us this afternoon, Cormac. Um, and before we go, I would like uh, just to invite our other participants uh, to, to come back on stream if they if if they're there, and uh, we'll start our Q and A session um, with our, our participants and, uh, if if they have any questions. So um, I think uh, Neve, you were first. Uh, so we'll go in the order people played. Neve, do you have any questions for for Cormac that you'd like to ask at this point? Yes. Um... I'm just wondering, um, as a student or even now, how did you balance um, high horn and low horn practice and repertoire? Um, good question. I just I try I tried not to limit myself. Um, I think in my warm ups, I try and go into the high register, but also go into the low register so that I'm covering both, so that I'm not just concentrating on the high register or just concentrating on the low register. I'm actually trying to kind of start in the middle and go go up and go down. So to have that kind of balance all the time and a really kind of fundamental balance in terms of this is my warm up, this is what I'm doing every time I practice or I start practicing. So it's not like I forget about it for six months. It, this is in ingrained and integral to my own routine um, and if if we get a, a first horn if you get a first horn job then you will be concentrating on the high register obviously and the same is true if you or the opposite is true if you get a low horn job second or fourth you'd be concentrating on the low register but i think it's important if we do get a job like that that we don't forget about the other side of the instrument that we are keeping in touch with it all the time it's an, it's incredibly important does that answer your question, Neve? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Neve. Cecily, anything you'd like to address with uh, Cormac? Um, I was just wondering if you have any like specific, if you have like a specific routine that you do like pre-performance that like helps you focus kind of your mind and that kind of thing. Yes, uh, another good question. So I try and kind of find a quiet-ish corner because. Mm -hmm. I think I just need to think about what I'm doing on stage when I'm going out there. So very often people will come up and start chatting to you because maybe they like to have a chat before they go on stage. But actually that kind of um, takes my focus away from the pieces that I have to play. So I, I usually try and find a quietish corner. If I can't find a quiet corner, I just don't kind of make eye contact with anybody. I kind of play a few quiet notes to myself. I keep myself to myself. Um, I can't, for me, I, I always like a tiny little bit of food before I go out. I know that this is, um, some people prefer not to eat, but if I, about half an hour before, at least if I have a banana or something, I think banana is meant to be really good with potassium and slow burning or slow, slow release of energy. And I think the potassium maybe helps with nerves and stuff like that. So, uh, just to have a little bit of food. Maybe if I go out on stage and I'm hungry, I'll be in trouble. Does that answer your question, Cecily? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Cecily. Eleanor, anything for Cormac? Um, yeah, I was just kind of wondering if you have any exercises, maybe for a warm up or just technical exercises that you would recommend that everyone should do whenever they're playing. Yeah. Well, um, um, 
I've, I'm very kind of F horn orientated. I mean, I really think it's the, the true sound of the instrument. Um, so this might be a little bit technical for all those non horn players around, but uh, I do spend most of my warm up playing on the F side of the instrument because I feel like if we can play well on the F side, then we can really play well on the B flat because the F side is longer. It's the, it's the, the F below the B flat. So it's longer tubing. And if we can really get a good sound, I mean, it is difficult to get a good quality sound on the F horn, particularly on a modern double instrument. Um, so if we can achieve that, I spend a lot of time messing around on the harmonics um, and that helps with flexibility that I've spoken about to, uh, to, to Cecily, just high and low register. So I'm getting an even listen and sound and it helps with just uh, getting the lips vibrating and resonating in the, in, or vibrating so that the instrument can resonate in a good way. So uh, lots of F horn stuff for me. It mightn't be everybody's cup of tea, but I really think it's the way forward. Great, thanks Cormac. And finally, Quiva, have you any, any further questions for Cormac? Yes. Um, did you like set out to be a first horn or um, like did, like kind of like what you have said, like did you focus on all areas of playing and then ended up being a first horn? Um, or did you always know that you wanted to be a first horn? Um, I always, thought I would like to be but um, I didn't I think my plan when I left school was simply just to go to college in Manchester and see what happened and then when I had done four years in, in Manchester um, I went to Guildhall to do a postgrad and I just so I just decided I'd go to London and be there and um, like it's a, it, they're great places to be, and but the standard is ex, uh, very very high. So I ended up getting a second horn job in uh, uh, Royal Philharmonic uh, a few years after I left Guildhall, and it was a good job, and I was learning loads, so I stuck with it. And then I got a second horn job with the Philharmonia for ten years, and the same. I was learning a huge. I mean, it doesn't matter what seat you sit in. I was just delighted to have an orchestra. Really delighted to have an orchestral job. Um, and then the opportunity for the first horn uh, job here in the concert orchestra came up and I went for it and I got it. So um, it's, I, I, I'm really happy with the fact that I've done both. I think, I'm, I think I'm a better first horn because I played in the section. And I think a lot of first horns get their jobs when they're, because they're such good, naturally good players. I've had to work incredibly hard all my life. But because they're very good, they get the jobs very young. Um, on first horn and they've never really had the opportunity to be a section player and I don't think they really understand it uh, but I, I hope and you'll have to ask my colleagues if this is true but I, I, I hope I'm better first horn because I've had that experience of sitting down, down the line and being in a horn section so and you know it, it, it's, it's a tough environment out there so I'm just happy to be playing horn Yeah, I, I would sit number eight and play whatever and I would still be happy Thank you very much, Cormac. Well, folks, I think uh, that pretty much brings us to a close. We have one question from uh, from a member of the public, uh, from Akira, uh, to, to Cormac, and that is, what age would it be good to start playing the French horn? And is there a good instrument to have played before moving to the French horn? Um, well, it's a very good question, Kira, and not too young because the instrument is very, it's, a, it's metal. <laughs> It's a big, heavy instrument. Okay, for younger students, you can get these single F horns, which are brilliant. Um, so eight, nine, ten-ish is a good age. Before that, I think recorder or piano is totally fine because it's, it's difficult at the start with French horn. You're really just trying to literally get one note out, out of the instrument. So it can be quite disheartening, actually. After a few months, you're just playing the same three notes or whatever. But with recorder, because it's a little bit easier to play, you can play tunes, you can play on ensembles, there's a lot more. So recorder is, is fantastic, or piano. Um, the note is already there on the piano, but we're creating the sound from scratch with the French horn. So um, it's good to play another, you can have 20 recorder players and play in a recorder ensemble. That, that's very useful. Thank you very much, uh, Cormac. 
Well, folks, that pretty much concludes our masterclass for this afternoon. Uh, Neve, uh, Cecily, Eleanor, and Quiva, thank you very much for being with us. And we very much look forward to hearing more from you in the future. And uh, Cormac, uh, once again, thank you very much from all of us at the National Concert Hall for being with us today. Um, it, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, also, we really look forward to being able to hear you back in the National Concert Hall playing in person. Great. Well, thank you, Nigel. And also thank you to Colleen, who's in the in the uh, concert hall, rescuing us from all these internet um, uh, situations. So thank you, Colleen. And congratulations again to all the players. You've done fantastically well. Thank you, Cormac. Goodbye, everyone. And please do tune in next Thursday when we will have our final masterclass in this series. And that is a bassoon masterclass with Peter Whelan. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much for joining us. Goodbye.